Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we delve into the enchanting realm of myths and legends. Have you ever wondered the origins of dragons? Dragons hold a special place in the world of mythical beasts. They started out as snakes, then evolved into fire-breathing, flying monsters that both terrorize and charm us. But where did the idea for dragons come from in the first place? How did these magnificent creatures squirm and soar their way into our imaginations and mythology? No one knows, of course, but the origin of dragons may have been more scientific than it seems. But let's start with legend. As one of the most popular mythological creatures in modern day, the dragon is no mystery. It does, however, have a lengthy history that many people are unaware of. When most people envision a dragon, they think of a large reptile-like creature with enormous wings that breathes fire and attacks castles. Although dragons occur commonly in legends around the world, different cultures have perceived them differently. Chinese dragons, and eastern dragons generally, are usually seen as benevolent and spiritual, representative of primal forces of nature and the universe, and great sources of wisdom. In contrast, European dragons, as well as some cultures of Asia Minor such as the ancient Persian Empire, were more often than not malevolent, associated with evil supernatural forces and the natural enemy of humanity. Now let's take a look at dragon myths in different civilizations. Ancient Mesopotamian Dragon Myths Tales of dragons, as we recognize them, first appear in the mythology of ancient Mesopotamia. Turn back the clock to the second millennium BC and a mythological creature called the Mu'u, or Fear Snake, appears in written texts. The Mu'u emerges throughout Sumerian and Babylonian mythology and is described as serpent-like, covered in scales, and possessing a snake's tongue and head, along with the talons of an eagle. Most notably, the god Marduk is often depicted as one of these dragon-like figures, which may also have represented the defeated deity Tiamat. The draconic creature can be seen in carvings from the Ishtar Gate in Babylon, dating back to the 6th century BC. It is uncertain where these dragon myths originated, but they spread throughout the region. In ancient Persian stories, dragons were often seen as villains. They were shown as big snakes or dragons with wings, called Azdahas. One famous dragon is Zahak, also known as the Snake Shoulder, who was a bad character in these tales. He was said to be the son of Araman, who represents all that is evil. So, in old Persian beliefs, dragons were not good creatures and usually meant something bad might happen. Ancient Egyptian stories also host mythological dragons like the giant serpent deity Apep, or Apophis, who was viewed as the god of chaos and the adversary of light. Apep was the nemesis of Are, the sun god, and his roots can be traced back to as early as 400 BC. In China, dragons are very important and are seen as powerful and lucky. They are also thought to control the weather. The Chinese emperor used the dragon as a sign of his own power. There are stories about dragon kings who rule over the seas and are linked to different colors and seasons. In Japan and Korea, dragons are also important in stories and beliefs. They look similar to Chinese dragons and are connected to water and rain. Japanese dragons come from old stories and Chinese influences. Korean dragons are good and help with farming and protecting the country. There's a story about a king who wanted to become a dragon to guard Korea. In the Hindu story of the Mahabharata, there are beings called Nagas that can change shape between humans and snakes. They are like half-gods and are shown as kings and queens in the story. They are linked to secret places underground and are shown in religious art as either people with snake features or as part snake, part human. There's also a big snake named Vritra, known as Ahi, who represents dry times and fights against Indra, the god of thunder. In the stories from the Philippines, there's a creature called Bakunawa. It looks like a snake with wings and is said to be behind things like eclipses and storms. People picture it with a tail that curls and one horn. It's mostly known as a creature of the sea, but some also say it lives in the sky or a hidden world. As time went on, Bakunawa got mixed up with other similar creatures from South Asia, like the Naga, Rahu, and Ketu, because of more people traveling and trading between the regions. There are other dragons in the area too. For example, Laho, which is also called Nono or Buaya, is a dragon that people believe swallows the moon during an eclipse. Then there's the Lao from Kapampangan Tales, which is a dragon that looks a bit like a bird. It's said to cause both kinds of eclipses, and it shares some traits with the demon Rahu from Hindu and Buddhist stories. In old stories from Greece, dragons were huge, scary snakes that could spit deadly stuff. The name, dragon, comes from the Greek word, drakon, which means a big snake. These Greek tales talked about scary snake monsters like Typhon, Leiden, the Hydra, and the Colchian dragon, which were supposed to scare brave people. In stories from places like Germany, dragons were called worms and were big, poisonous snakes, sometimes with wings like bats. At first, these dragons were a lot like regular snakes, and old stories didn't make much difference between them. 
They were called Orm in Old Norse stories and Wyrm in Old English. Later on, as more ideas came from other parts of Europe, these wingless worms changed into dragons with wings and four legs, especially as Christianity spread in those areas. In the Americas, many native tribes have stories about dragons too. The Illini tribe created wall paintings of the Piasa bird near the Mississippi River. This creature looks like a dragon with wings. People aren't sure why it's there, but some think it's connected to the bigger Cahokia culture from long ago. In the eastern parts of North America, there's a creature called the Horned Serpent that shows up in many tribal stories. It's often linked to rain and lightning. Long ago, stories from places like Sumer, Akkad, and Egypt told of dragons as big, snake-like creatures that caused chaos. They were beaten by gods who then ruled the world. In the Middle East, dragons were often seen as evil because of the dangerous snakes there. The Egyptians had a dark serpent god named Apipi. Greeks and Romans sometimes thought dragons could be good, living deep in the earth. But mostly, dragons were seen as bad, and this idea stayed strong in Europe. When Christianity came, it mixed up old stories of good and bad dragons, making them all bad, symbols of sin and non-Christian beliefs. Art showed dragons being defeated by saints. Famous stories had heroes like Saint George or the Archangel Michael fighting dragons, which stood for Satan. They were shown in armor, using weapons to beat the dragons. Dragons were also in stories about being greedy and taking things, like the story in the Bible where a snake causes humans to lose forever life, or Asian tales of snakes at life-giving trees. These stories led to the idea of dragons guarding special trees or treasures. Like the Greek hero Heracles fighting a dragon to get golden apples, or the Indian Nagas protecting a magical tree. Sometimes, dragons attack these trees, like in Iranian and Germanic myths. The image of dragons guarding or attacking life-giving trees or treasures became popular in art across Asia and Europe, even on churches like the Baptistry of Parma. This showed how important the idea of dragons was in many cultures. And that's a wrap on our dragon escapade, folks. But before you fly off, let's get interactive. What dragon legend fascinates you the most? Would you rather have a dragon's wisdom or its strength? Share your thoughts and keep the conversation blazing in the comments below. Remember, here at Celestial Chronicles, we're all about keeping the magic alive. So, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for more mythical musings. Until next time, keep your eyes to the skies, who knows what you might spot.